All right, guys, look. We're doing the cold open to my YouTube special. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a Bottom? Bottom? Okay. Oh, I was gonna say, is that what? what that's a new name. Like? That's a new name for this special. <laughs> Started from the bottom, still here. <laughs> so I think, uh, as far as design, I would like a, just a sign on a random office that says Green Room. <laughs> Any ideas? You could um, I play the trombone. Trombone. It's good, there's no trombones on the stage <laughs> as of right now, so I'm, how are I gonna, like- How are we gonna get a trombone in, on the stage in less than an hour? You got a trombone That's guy? Crazy. You got a trombone guy. Yeah, See? Yeah. I don't think you could do it. I just, if we're gonna do that, I don't wanna go up tonight because you're just gonna be disappointed in everything. I don't Okay, think okay, if we can't do trombones, let's get some plants. All right, some plants. Maybe you're watering plants. Maybe I'm watering plants, and 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 are let's say they're fake, fake plants. Okay. Okay. All right, now I'm just spitballing here. I'm doing strictly the hits tonight. Strictly the hits. <laughs> Is any of this usable? I'm <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for having me here in, in Jamestown. Uh, my name is Steven Rogers. Uh, I have the same name as the superhero Captain America. Yes. It's as big a deal as you all made it just now. Uh, <laughs> it really sucks having the same name as a superhero, especially when you look like he did before he was super. <laughs> I hate it. Nobody gets it. Nobody relates. Like recently I met a guy named Peter Parker and we just hugged for a little bit. <laughs> we ended up saving each other. Yeah. Every time I like introduce myself to somebody, they have to bring it up, every single time. I, I'm worried if I ever have to call 911 for myself, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, hello, I've just been shot. Yeah, Steven Rogers. Yeah, yeah, just like that guy, listen. <laughs> I'm on the corner of, oh, you're right, I should've used my shield. You're so funny. I, uh, I'm a very anxious person. I have pretty bad anxiety. Uh, nobody understands anxiety. That's one thing I noticed. I told my one friend I had it. He's like, ah, don't worry about it, man. It could always be worse. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> that's anxiety. That's like if I told you how to stutter and you're like, well, you could say that again. Yeah, I probably will. <laughs> I think the reason like people don't take it seriously anymore is everybody uses the word anxious and anxiety. We just, we're used to it. You know, I think we need a new name. I was thinking we could call it pre-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> yeah, because that's really what it is. Every day I'm walking around like, oh no! And people go, what happened? And I'm like, nothing, I'm just getting ready. <laughs> Should be here any minute now. <laughs> Yeah, my doctor prescribed me pills for my anxiety, and then he warned me that they're extremely addictive. <laughs> so now I'm too anxious to take my anxiety medication. <laughs> I'm afraid to take them out of the bottle. So I just shake the pills whenever I'm nervous. It's like I got prescribed a rain stick. I don't know if you guys freak out and look like you're in a mariachi band, but... I'm like, oh, my heartbeat is Rapido. Uh, <laughs> when they give you those pills, they give you a form to sign promising that you'll never sell them. Yeah, I have anxiety. I can't be a drug dealer. 
I'd be so nervous on the way to the deal, I would take all the pills. Just walk into the alleyway like, hey, fellas. Bad news. I'm out of product. Good news, I'm not that worried about it. You should try this stuff. Yeah. I get panic attacks. That's a big part of my anxiety. I get panic attacks. Those are pretty awful. They're like a dress rehearsal for death. Because yeah. it's your brain telling you that you're dying, and then you don't. One of these days, I will be dying and think I need to calm down. You know? I'll be like, in this too, shell, And then I'll pass away. Yeah. I've learned a lot about people by having panic attacks, though. I found out women, way better to be around during a panic attack than men. My, my girlfriend will walk me through it, calm me down. She's a saint, no problem. My guy friends, they're the worst. Like I'm gasping for air and they're trying to throw grapes into my mouth. I'm like, this is counterproductive. It's awful. Yeah, because I don't take my pills, I have to find other ways to calm myself down, you know? I like skipping stones, that works for me. But my favorite part is afterwards, because I get to watch my neighbor pick the rocks out of his pool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, take that, Jeff. Take this one, too. Yeah. I, <laughs> I also go to therapy. I'm not gonna ask if you guys go to therapy. I'll do it individually as you leave. And. <laughs> I, I love therapy a little bit too much. Like I went and got the same couch as her, so. Probably a bad sign if you're practicing at home. My, uh, my therapist is a lady, so I had my first breakthrough immediately, which was uh, talking to my woman for an hour. I said, my woman. That's not how it goes. Uh, look guys, you know, we all make mistakes on the biggest night of your life and uh, Look, I'm just trying to kill time until the band gets here. That's all I'm really doing, okay? I, I just put the cones out near their bus. I don't know where they are. I want to try that joke again, and thank you. I well, wait, you haven't heard it. Uh, save it, I appreciate it, but you might be like, oh God, can I undo those? So I go to therapy, guys. People listening to the album will be like, why are they laughing at the setup? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I love therapy. Therapy's basically hiring an exterminator for your thoughts. That's really all you're doing. Because they come in and they're like, wow. Why'd you let it get this bad? <laughs> they are eating everything from the inside out. This is... Yeah, my therapist is a woman. Yeah. yeah, so I had my first breakthrough immediately, which was talking to a lady for an hour. So that was... Thank you. If you're, uh, if you're listening at home, that's the first time I said that joke. And... Yeah. I've been doing video therapy and... Uh, I don't know if I can do it anymore because I have bad Wi-Fi and self-esteem. <laughs> Horrible combination. I was talking to my therapist and her screen froze at the same time she was rolling her eyes. I was like, who do I call about this? A tech support or a new therapist? Huh? This is rough. Yeah, I, I'm working on my self-esteem. I have to work on it, you know. It's not, it's not great. I, uh, I recently got a confidence crystal, though, and, uh, yeah, I did. And I know that works because I stole it, so. I was like, ooh, I already feel it. <laughs> I'm afraid of home invasions. Uh, <laughs> no, I know we all are, but. No, you're fine. I, I will be able to hear all of the things you say. I'm in the same room. <laughs> the album is being made now. This is not like it coming through my body. No, you're great. I'm, I'm teasing. You're great. 
I know we're all afraid of home invasions, okay? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why the setup is like that. I've never been to a place and people are like, why? I could have used you much earlier than tonight, honestly. <laughs> no, we don't understand. You're afraid of people breaking into your home and invading your privacy? <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> but here's why I'm afraid of home invasions, uh, is because it combines two of my biggest fears, uh, which is danger and meeting new people. I'm like, oh, great. Now I gotta make small talk with this guy. <laughs> so, where'd you get the gun? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I can't afford a security system, so I had to, like, improvise. I just keep my apartment super messy. <laughs> I do. It works. Because now if I trip over something in the middle of the night, I just leave it there. Yeah, because if I'm going to trip over it, so are the killers. Because you can hack an alarm, but you can't turn off an ottoman. I don't know what's more deadly, the intruder or the walk to my light switch. Plus, my place is so messy, even if somebody does break in, they'll be like, ah, somebody's already been here. Going by the smell, he's dead. Thank you. I have social anxiety because I like to collect them all. And uh, yeah. Once I get agoraphobia, you will never see me again. So. Thank you for getting that. When people don't get that joke, I want to go home. It's so. Yeah. I, I, uh, I have social anxiety. I've had that since high school. In fact, in my yearbook, I was voted most likely to think about this forever. <laughs> and uh, they were right. I'm still talking about it. So. <laughs> social anxiety has made me jealous of people I've never been jealous of before in my life, like smokers. Because <laughs> smokers can leave a party or a conversation whenever they want to, and nobody asks them any questions. Yeah, that's amazing. So I just tell people I'm a smoker now. Yeah. I was at this party, this guy kept talking to me all night. I was like, hey man, I'm gonna go outside and smoke. He was like, ah, I'll join you. I was like, well, I'm gonna go smoke crack, so. In case you're still interested, I'm gonna call the cops on myself. Yeah, I'll give you an example of my recent social anxiety. This happened uh, pretty recently. I was talking to a buddy and he was like, hey man, I just spoke with our boy. Isn't that crazy? He's gonna be a dad? And I was like, yeah, that is crazy. Our boy is gonna be a father. And ever since then, I've been trying to figure out who our boy is. <laughs> I have no idea. I've never called anyone my boy in my life. And now I'm finding out I have at least one boy out there. So now I've just been on this quest to find my boy. I think it's gonna take me nine months. Every night I'm laying in bed just staring at the ceiling like, who are his boys that could also be my boy? I got a bulletin board and some yarn. You know, whenever I look at the moon, I'm wondering if my boy's looking at the same moon. <laughs> now, every time I see a guy friend, I'm like, what's up, daddy? Still haven't found him, so it's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, uh, my friends, they don't help with the anxiety. They recently took me to one of those barcades that had, like, that punching game. When you, like, when you punch the bag, it scores your punch from one to a thousand, which is uh, unnecessary. <laughs> the screen should just say, nice job or great haircut. That's all I wanted to say. So all my friends are like really good at it. You know, first friend, 556. Sec second friend, 652. Next friend, 753. I was like, good God. I'm lucky if I hit a 200. And even then, they'll call me 200 boy and never let me live it down. And then I hit an 11. <laughs> I 
That is the real number that I hit. I think if I kissed it, I would have got a higher number. The only thing that would have been worse is if the machine spoke. Like, hey, did you go yet? <laughs> and my buddies were like, why did you even do this? You've been complaining since we did it. I was like, well, all of you were doing it. They're like, well, if we jumped off a bridge, would you? I was like, can we? I just hit an 11. <laughs> And then the band plays. <laughs> if they were here. No. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I just remembered what joke I'm gonna say next. And boy, I wish I didn't dance before I said it. So I'm trying to get more comfortable with my masculinity and... <laughs> yeah, I'm trying, you know, it's hard. Like, this is No Shave November from two years ago, so... <laughs> Got some work to do. Yeah. I have a hard time with, like, masculine professions. Like, mechanics, they make me uncomfortable. Because I know nothing, it's upsetting. Like a mechanic, when they see me, they get as excited as those dogs when a soldier comes home. I'm like, get down, get down. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I had a recent incident. I, uh, my girlfriend has a car. I've never owned a car in my life. And uh, she was out of town. And whenever my girlfriend's out of town, she has me watch her car. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, don't, I just make sure it's fed and everything, but. Uh, so my girlfriend was out of town, and uh, her car was just like, whenever I, when I drove it, it made this horrible sound, this god-awful sound. It basically sounded like it was screaming, and I know that because uh, we harmonized. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, if you guys don't know, like, you guys probably know this, I did not. When you call a mechanic about a noise, he'll ask you what you think it is. I panicked. I told him the only car word I know, which is belt. I was like, hey, buddy, I don't know if it's the buckle or the strap, but... This is my first car surgery. And I tried everything to fix it, you know? I put gas in it. And I turned the radio up. So, everything you can do. So I get to the garage, like I'm all nervous. I put the car in pee. And, and I get out, I'm like, man, you're really good. I don't even hear the noise anymore. You're amazing. He's like, well, you turned the car off. So, <laughs> well, that's why you're that guy. That's why you have all denim, and I just have this lower half. You're doing better. Yeah. And then he uh, had me pop the hood. I swear to God, I didn't know where that button was. <laughs> have you ever had somebody take over from the beginning? This guy did everything but pick me up. He should have just held my hips like we were working on my golf swing. Just. Then he kept the car for a couple days and uh, would call me every day raising the amount of money to get the car back. Yeah, it felt like a hostage situation. I was worried he was gonna start cutting off pieces of it and sending it to me in the mail. You know, like I open up a box, oh my God, it's a side mirror. Whose oil is this? And then he fixed the car and it was the belt. Yeah, they don't take money off if you guess right. I mean, like, I wanted to know, what was that guess for? Was that so like when they're all playing cars together, they can go, hey, this other day, the guy said rotator cuff. Like, it's pretty good. Yeah, I feel grateful for this guy though. He didn't take as much advantage of me as he could have, you know? You guys figured out how much I know about cars. He could have gave me a different car back and I wouldn't have known. I'm like, oh, that's how you fix it. You make it blue. Okay. <laughs> and you put a ram on the front. That's... Okay. No. <laughs> I, uh, I, do, I do a lot of traveling doing this. I fly, you know, I go to exotic places like Jamestown. And... Uh, 
No, this is really, I love this town so much. I, I'm really be happy to be performing on the strip. Uh, <laughs> I know you had a lot of other choices. Like the Sports Hall of Fame I've never seen open once. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fly a lot, I'm afraid of flying. Nobody makes you feel better when you tell them you're afraid of flying. I told my dad I was afraid of flying. He's like, ah, oh, that's just because you're not in control. Uh, no, I think I'd be more scared if I was flying this thing. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like, ladies and gentlemen, this is the guy that was an 18B. <laughs> but now I'm your captain. <laughs> just want to let you know, that's not turbulence. I'm just really nervous up here. <laughs> Exero, it's your big day. Eat the peanuts, doesn't matter if you're allergic. We're all gonna die. I hope you guys like slides. Because I'm afraid of flying, I usually take the bus, which has taught me to get over my fear of flying. Yeah, I've been on enough Greyhounds to realize I'd rather cry in the sky. Everyone is sick on the bus. I think they give you a free ticket if you have whooping cough. <laughs> One guy next to me, he was picking his nose so much, I started to root for the boogers. <laughs> I was like, you can get away! Yeah. It's horrible. They always break down too. Like every bus I've taken for comedy has broken down. I think it's just on their schedule. You know, they're like, hey, we're going from Philly to New York with one stop. I'm like, really? Where is it? They're like, depends. <laughs> Last time we almost made it. And I shouldn't be surprised because there's always like a million electrical outlets at the seat for you to charge your phone, but they never work. I think we're just charging the bus. <laughs> yeah. I do a lot of public transportation. I live in New York City, take the subway a lot. And uh, I was recently attacked uh, while waiting for the train. Uh, a guy walked by and he spit in my face. And yeah, and I didn't ask him to do that. <laughs> yeah, he spit in my face, then he took a couple steps away, stopped, came back, and then punched me in the face. Yeah, so I think this guy's new to assault. <laughs> you know, he got over here and he's like, I'm forgetting something. <laughs> oh, that's right, there's more coming. <laughs> yeah. And there was a subway booth operator down there and he called the cops, which is great, but he called the cops like this, I swear to God. Hey, when you get a second, <laughs> send somebody down here. I felt like a grocery store spill. <laughs> I tell my friends I was attacked, they're like, that's crazy, you're like the least punchable person we know. <laughs> I was like, how am I the least punchable person? They're like, well, you're so nice. You're unassuming. You're nonviolent. I'm like, I think that's why he hit me. <laughs> I think the least punchable person is the most punchable person. <laughs> and I wanted to sick my boys on this guy, but I don't remember who they are. <laughs> And everybody was like, Steve, why didn't you hit him back? I'm like, well, it looked like he could take an 11, so. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are wonderful. So I'm trying to get more comfortable with my body. I don't know if you guys are trying to get more comfortable with my body. <laughs> they say you should treat your body like a temple, and I do. I only pay attention to it around the holidays. <laughs> We all have like confidence hurdles we have to you know, make when it comes to our, our bodies. I have this thing, I have a large indent in my chest. Uh, there's an actual medical term for it. It's called pectus excavatum. And that is Latin for chest pothole. <laughs> <laughs> there is a surge you can get, but they just fill it with gravel. So I'm not. 
I'm not going to get that. I get a lot of dumb questions about it. People are like, hey, were you born with it? No, jousting accident. Yeah. <laughs> Is it hereditary? Yeah, I come from a long line of cup holders. That's my background. <laughs> And it's hard dating with it, you know, because my body type is half an avocado. Uh, <laughs> my girlfriend loves it, though, because whenever we cuddle, she has a place to put her head. Uh, and she can hear the ocean, so it's pretty... <laughs> I want to be more muscular, but I don't want to be one of those guys that's, like, always oily. Have you seen them? I'm like, oh, that's a bodybuilder. I thought it was a dolphin. <laughs> How'd you get in here? You seem so slippery. You ever do that when you go to the gym and you're like, what is this, a disco party? They're like, no, sorry, the sun's hitting Derek. Uh, is, uh, is holding your pee in an exercise? Because if it is, I'm working out right now. But... <laughs> I have a hard time exercising at my gym because like, everybody there is training for something except for me, and that's kind of embarrassing. You know? I only go there because it's supposed to help with your anxiety, which means I'm the only person at my gym that's training for something that's never gonna happen. <laughs> I was running on the treadmill, this guy comes up to me, he goes, hey man, what are you preparing for? I was like, the day somebody chases me. <laughs> that's why I'm wearing jeans. I have a hard time exercising at the gym. I think it's because it's so easy to leave. You know, they should really make the door their heaviest equipment. <laughs> they should, you know? Like every time you try to get out of there early, there's a trainer on the other side, and you're like, how do I get out of here? He's like, you really gotta want it. <laughs> I guess I'm not there yet. Yeah. I don't know, the gym's boring. You know, I, I just get so bored, I have a hard time with it, you know? They should, like, make the gym more fun. Make it like an arcade, that would be great. Like, after you're done using a machine, tickets come out. You know, you're like, oh my God, I went so hard today. This is amazing. People come over to my house, Steve, why do you have so many stuffed animals? Because I'm a beast, that's why! Get on my level! So I don't care if I have abs, I just want to glow in the dark slinky. That's really uh, All my friends, they figured out their exercise, which kind of bothers me, you know? They work out by playing their favorite sport. They lose weight playing their favorite sport. It's so annoying. All my favorite sports, you get fatter while you're playing. I shoot pool, I throw darts, and I bowl. All those you can do while eating a soft pretzel. You know, if you're sweating during any of those, you're having a heart attack. That's what's happening. Yeah, I'm trying to find a workout that I love. I recently bought a jump rope, and uh, that's not it. Here's a little tip for you guys. If you're gonna buy a jump rope, measure your apartment first. You guys ever find out you're too poor to jump rope? Pretty embarrassing. Now I just own a silent whip. My buddy was like, hey, just do it outside. I'm like, well, then people would know I jump rope. So I'll just find a private place to do the world's sassiest workout by myself. He's like, you know, you can do the workout without the rope. I'm 5'6". If you see me jumping without a rope, it looks like I'm trying to see a parade. I tried to get into running. They don't tell you a lot when you get into running. They don't tell you what to do with your keys. <laughs> Nothing. I didn't want them in my pocket because I felt like the jingling was gonna let people know how often I'm stopping to rest. So I had to get an armband, which is supposed to hold your uh, keys while you run. Uh, I get it in the mail, it only holds one key. Who has one key? I had to buy 10 armbands. It's either that or get so fast I'm back before my door closes. I live in New York City. You can't put your keys under the mat. The rats are going to use them for swords. <laughs> and look, I know I have a key bowl in my chest, but I can't run like this and throw out my back. 
Worst part about the armband, I put it on, my arms are so skinny, it keeps sliding down <laughs> while I run. So I have to run like this. It looks like I have a question when I exercise. Excuse me, why is my body like this? <laughs> I used to be a competitive swimmer. I know that's why most of you are here. And uh, I was. I was a competitive swimmer for a long time. I, uh, I got into swimming because my parents uh, got me into swim lessons because they didn't know how to swim. And uh, then they never learned. In hindsight, I should have taken advantage of that. You know, like, yeah, mom and dad, I'll show you my report card in the deep end. <laughs> I ended up going far in swimming. I ended up being a substitute swim teacher. <laughs> that is a real job. Yeah, they don't close the pool, they bring in me. <laughs> substitute teaching a swim class is a lot harder than you think, because you can't show a movie. Yeah. You're like, well, you kids would've hated Jaws, so. And attendance is so nerve wracking, because you're like, Jeremy? Jeremy. All right, let's put on our goggles and look for Jeremy. <laughs> People don't think swimming is a sport, and that always bothered me, so I looked at the definition of a sport to see if I could win the argument. Here's the definition of a sport. It's a physical activity, okay. Competing against other people, sure. For entertainment. We were so close. <laughs> it was almost a sport. I knew it wasn't a sport when I was in high school, because if you played a sport in high school, you could give your jersey to your girlfriend to wear. <laughs> I was a swimmer, I couldn't do that. The best I could do was shave my legs with her. <laughs> oh, honey, we're gonna go down the hallway so fast, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Very competitive swimming. People don't know that, super competitive. I was about to race this guy one time. He was like, hey man, why are you a swimmer? You gay? You like hanging around with shirtless guys? I was like, no man, I just like a sport where I don't have to stop to pee. <laughs> so don't come in second. <laughs> if you're not number one, you're swimming in it. Well, I'm the son of two parents. <laughs> My parents are cool people, very cool people. Like, seriously, cooler than I would like them to be. <laughs> and my friends talk about my parents so much, I get jealous. <laughs> They're like, your dad is amazing and your mom is incredible. I'm like, yeah, wouldn't it be great if we could find somebody that was like both of them put together? <laughs> I bet that kid would be cool and, and have feelings. Yeah. My parents are at that age right now, whenever they sit or stand, they make a noise. You know, like whenever my dad gets up, it sounds like there's a sumo wrestler in the next room. He's just like, Ugh! How heavy is the air, dad? Do you need a spotter? What's going on in there? Did the lazy boy get its own gravitational pull? And I get why they do it. Like, I lived with them for so long, I understand it. But the problem is, I lived with them for a long time to the point where I make those noises now. <laughs> I'm in my 20s. I should be calling out for Jesus when I tie my shoes. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I'm worried that's gonna count against one of my prayers. You know, I drive off a cliff, I'm like, oh my God, and he's like, ah, I helped you with that double knot. <laughs> My dad, he's great. We were playing frisbee on the beach last summer and he threw out his back so he couldn't stand any further than a 90 degree angle. So he made me lean next to him and make it look like we were looking at shells together. <laughs> I was like, hey, look at this one. And he was like, ah! I was like, see, pretty cool shell. I knew you'd like it. Cool shell, he's fine, he just likes shells. My dad is uh, pretty bad with technology. You know, he's a great man, just bad with technology. You know, he got hacked on Facebook recently and uh, that was a matter of time. <laughs> yeah. My dad, whenever we FaceTime, he holds his iPad at an angle where the camera keeps correcting itself the entire <laughs> conversation. It looks like he called me while he's rolling down a hill. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, good to see you. 
So he got hacked on Facebook. What happened was all my friends were getting messages from his account with a link to an article on stroke prevention. <laughs> You're all reacting like you guys read these all the time. This very weird thing. I linked to an article on stroke prevention. As soon as all my friends got that, they're like, you need to take care of your father. Like he's old yeller. Like I was gonna be like, all right, dad, you should have had a harder password. Let's go to the woods. <laughs> so I get a hold of my dad. I'm like, dad, you've been hacked. He's like, oh my God, what do I do? I was like, here's what we do. We get into all your accounts. We change all your passwords because my friends are getting messages from your Facebook with a link to an article on stroke prevention. And he was like, no, that's me. <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I just want to make sure everybody's safe. <laughs> That's when I realized parents message like scammers. It always comes out of nowhere. You never want to click anything, and the punctuation is a dead giveaway. <laughs> My dad's exclamation points are always a mile away from the end of the sentence. It looks like two separate thoughts. He's like, have a good day. <sighs> I'm like, what happened? Was it the hill? <laughs> yeah, he's working on it now though. Like whenever my dad sends me a message, he now says, it's me in the message. <laughs> yeah, and that was going good until he sent me an article that said, flasher still at large. <laughs> uh, my mom is a little upset right now. My brother, he just got arrested for selling weed and uh, she is devastated uh, because he's her dealer. So. I don't know what I'm going to do for Mother's Day. It's going to be a little hard. My, this is true. My mom's been a pothead my entire life, and I never knew that growing up because she would only smoke inside the house when my aunt was around. So I just thought that was old lady smell. And then my aunt passed away, but I could still smell it in our house. So I thought she was haunting us. I ran up to my mom's room. I was like, oh my God, Aunt Jackie's here and she's a ghost. And my mom was high. She was like, she is. <laughs> Hide the Doritos. <laughs> my whole life, nobody ever told me that was a smell of weed. I just saw my aunt's ghost with every rock concert I ever went to. <laughs> And my mom never said anything. Isn't that crazy? She never said anything. I think it's because she was high and she thought it was hilarious. <laughs> you know, she was like, this is Steven. <laughs> he smells dead people. <laughs> you get a weird kid. So uh, my mom has uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, she walks with a cane. She's okay. It just affects her balance. She's had it my entire life. Always falling, always okay. It's pretty crazy. You know, I've never seen her like break a joint. I've seen her light one on the way down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like, ah, oh, another one of these. <laughs> yeah. Always falls, always okay. It's like having a stunt double for a parent. It's crazy. <laughs> she just rolls on the ground and goes, I'm good. <laughs> okay, action, <laughs> you know. Yeah. She did get worried that we wouldn't like, like check on her anymore. Like we would get too used to it, you know, like it would just fade into the background. So uh, this is true. While I was growing up, she would throw baskets of laundry down the stairs and check our response time. <laughs> I would hear a thud, I'd run up. She's like, really, three minutes? <laughs> Those socks could have been me. So uh, the last time my parents visited me in New York, uh, we were leaving a restaurant. My mom tripped and fell and got like a cut on her forehead. She was okay, but she was bleeding a lot. Uh, so my dad and I tried to help her up, but she was too proud. So she yelled, get away from me. <laughs> so everybody on the street saw two men standing over a bloody woman while one of them was holding a cane over her head. I was like, Dad, can you hold this? <laughs> Two cops overheard this and came running over, and they were both female officers. So you know, right away, they were on me and my dad's side. 
One cop stood next to me, and the other one stood next to my dad, and my dad got the cop I wanted, which, you know. I was like, hey, if they go to the bathroom, let's switch. Yeah. yeah. The cop I got, she was kind of aggressive. She started roasting me on how young I look. She was like, does your mom even know where you are right now? I'm like, I don't know. She hit the ground pretty hard. Uh, yeah. So we checked on her. She was fine. She was okay. And we explained everything to the cops. They felt bad, so they offered to drive my parents back to their hotel in the back of their squad car. Yeah. If you've never put your mom and dad... in the back of a police cruiser. I was like, smile, new Christmas card. This is amazing. I got to read my dad the Miranda rights. Yeah. I mean, I did it wrong. I just sang Bad Boys, but still. What you gonna do? <laughs> mm. So I'm in a relationship, it's going pretty good. My, uh, I, I, I like being in a relationship. I'm, I'm really bad at single life. It's so, uh, like, embarrassing. I can't tell when a girl likes me. A girl could be rubbing my leg and I'll be like, oh, she wants to get her boyfriend these pants. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, checking the inseam. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> like, I'm really bad at reading signals. I'm so bad at it. I was, I was at a bar one time talking to this woman and she went to the ladies room and the bartender's like, hey, you're doing really well. I was like, really? He goes, trust me, if a girl's attracted to you, she'll act more feminine. And I was like, ah, oh, thank God. I thought she was mocking me. <laughs> I went through a bad breakup a few years ago, really bad. I've never broken up with anyone in my life. It was really scary. I was so nervous. My buddy was like, ah, just rip it off like a Band-Aid. Get it over with. I was like, well, don't some Band-Aids just fall off on their own? <laughs> you know, wouldn't it be great if you got out of a swimming pool and you're like, hey, I'm single. <laughs> this is great. Then you see your relationship stuck to your friend. You're like, ugh. He'll figure it out. Uh, that looks gross. My girlfriend dresses me, and uh, I don't mean that she picks out my clothes, all right? I mean that I lay on my back with my legs in the air. <laughs> Just screaming, more powder! And it feels good, I like it. Yeah. That's the first thing she fixed about me when we started dating was the way I dress. She said I was wearing clothes that were way too big for me, and they were mediums. That's right, everybody, you're looking at a small man. Okay, maybe a big boy, but... I thought I was dressing fine, then I saw pictures of myself, and you know when there's like three kids in a trench coat trying to get into an R-rated movie? I looked like the bottom two left. My girlfriend had her birthday recently, and I do pretty well on the gift because I listen to her. That's all you gotta do. The only problem, though, is uh, her phone is also a really good listener. <laughs> this is true. The last couple birthdays, leading up to her birthday, her phone has gotten ads for the gift I've already bought her. And it's just been a race to her birthday. I think her phone wants to date her and is trying to shove me out, honestly. <laughs> you know, everybody's like, robots are trying to steal our jobs. And I'm like, and our women. <laughs> I'm trying, man, because like, I'm just worried that she's gonna go, go out and buy this thing before I can give it to her. So I've just trying, I've just been on this fight against her phone. Every time she goes to bed, I take her phone in the other room and I try to beat the algorithm. I'm like, corkscrews, lava lamps, string cheese, porcupines, ringworm. It worked, but we have a lot of porcupines now. Uh, She, uh, she's more masculine than I am, and uh, a lot of my friends are like, doesn't that make you feel weak? I'm like, actually, it makes me feel pretty. So, <laughs> I'm doing really good. My girlfriend's a big drinker. She, uh, big drinker. <laughs> You're a little early. Uh, <laughs> I'm worried that you guys are seeing a reason. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's her.
I didn't know she was bringing the chopper. <laughs> My girlfriend's a big drinker. Bigger drinker than me, like big drinker. She crushes the can after she's done. Yeah, and I don't do that because root beer is sticky, so. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, yucky. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, <laughs> she's a former athlete. Most girls I've dated have been athletes. They've either played soccer, field hockey, or softball, so I'm just dating the sons my dad wanted. <laughs> I'm like, hey, after dinner, will you play catch with him? I don't know why I got down this low. You're definitely taller than me. <laughs> yeah. She's a strong woman. I'm very attracted to strong women because so, sometimes I want to feel safe. Yeah. Could have used her on the subway, but... Yeah, she's a strong woman. I'm very attracted to strong women. Like, all, all my, every girl I've been attracted to, former firefighter or an athlete, you know, very intimidating women to approach. Every time I would hit on a woman, it just sounded like a drive-by. I'd be like, hey, I think you're pretty. <laughs> I'll be way over here. But then I learned something. Strong women, you go after what you want. You're the pursuers. So what I would do is I would just go to a bar and try to look like prey. <laughs> I would just stand at the bar and graze on nachos like... How you doing? <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> she flirts different than I'm used to, too. She flirts by making fun of me. She'll like pick on me and call me names. She says that's how people show affection. If that's true, there was a lot of guys in grade school that wanted to date me. <laughs> I thought I was running for my life. It turns out, I was playing hard to get. I had no idea. I'm like, why are you like this? She's like, well, saying I love you is scary. I'm like, so are those headlocks you put me in. So, we should pick one. Yeah, I can't tell if we're flirting or we're fighting sometimes. You know, one time she was like, get over here. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, I made a mistake. Let me down. <laughs> yeah. She's very polite, my girlfriend's super polite. She always says thank you when I tell her I love her. <laughs> I'm like, hey, don't mention it to anybody, please. But we learned this, I don't know if you guys know this, if you hug somebody for more than 30 seconds, it automatically changes their mood. This is true, yeah. Now whenever my girlfriend and I are fighting, I just hold on like it's a relationship rodeo, yeah. I tried it the other day, she was really mad at me. I tried it, it worked. She got madder and madder and madder. <laughs> Changed her mood. Yeah. I, uh, I had to meet my girlfriend's parents recently. That was kind of scary. We were having dinner at their house and her mom told me to sit wherever I felt comfortable. So I ate in the car. <laughs> while I drove home. So. Yeah, I was so nervous to meet her parents and my buddy was like, ah, just focus on how her mom looks because however her mom looks, that's how she's gonna look one day. And uh, bad news, everybody. She looked disappointed. She's better than my ex though. My ex, she would talk in her sleep every single night. Every single night. One time she rolled over in bed and went, watch out. Well, I can definitely do that, because I am not falling back to sleep tonight. <laughs> Gotta be ready for whatever the hell you're talking about. You know what, you take the first watch. I'll cover the morning. How's that? <laughs> Terrifying. Yeah. My girlfriend and I, we only have one problem in our relationship, and uh, it's me. <laughs> yeah. My relationship's great. I only have one problem in my relationship is, uh, anytime my girlfriend sends me to go get something, I can never find it. Yeah. I just sensed how many fights I just started. <laughs> like, anytime my girlfriend sends me, like, she thinks I'm not trying, but really I'm standing in front of that cabinet like... <laughs> Come on, eyes. 
Come on, eyes. You ever try to make them bigger, thinking that you'll see more stuff? Come on, eyes. I'll put you on whatever website you want. Just, for the love of God, find it. She sends me to the store. I'll send her pictures of what I'm looking at to see if it's the right thing. I'm like, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? She's like, yeah, that's the store. Please go in. If I go to the store and they don't have what she sent me to go get, I send her a video of the manager telling her that I looked. I'm like, you tell her I looked. You tell her. Now hold up today's paper. You guys are a lot of fun. Thank you so much. I'm Seymour Rogers. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you so much. All my friends, so good at it too. First friend, 550 free. 50 free. I'm having a stroke. Uh, I think I just named a swimming event. Yeah. My friends, they took me. People listening to the album are going to be like, this doesn't make sense. They're just, they're just laughing at the setup. I don't understand. Also, why are, why are my headphones this big? <laughs> my, uh, my friends, they don't help with the anxiety whatsoever. It's worse for me to have to keep saying this, by the way. So if you're like, oh, God, he's still on this. I'm also having these feelings. Yeah, so when you, you hit the punching bag, it scores your punch from one to a thousand. I hear a uh, siren. There, somebody, somebody called the ambulance for this joke. They're like, hey, it's... I don't, I don't think he's gonna be able to save it. <laughs> Hurry, it's flatlining! <laughs> My friends, they don't help with the... All right, here we go. From the top, everybody. I have the same name as Captain America. And, uh... All right, I'm just gonna play the clarinet. <laughs> 